Welcome to the research project guidelines. And hopefully this will give you a good idea of what is going to be expected on the research project. So I'm sharing the screen. <coughs> Excuse me. Didn't mean to cough in your ears. I showed you this in the introduction video. Let's see if that light helps a little, not at all. Um, but I wanna go in a little more detail here. Follow the instructions carefully. Now this class doesn't require that you've already taken English 1A. So it's quite possible that you don't know what it means to use a formatted guidelines for papers. The most common one at Hartnell is MLA, which is a way of writing your paper, designing your paper, and citing the references that you use, and then listing those references at the end of the paper in a section called Works Cited. But MLA is just one of many options. There's the uh, ASA style, CSE style, and numerous others based on the discipline uh, what industry you write papers for in the long run. And depending on what you do, if you're into science, if you're into the social sciences or uh, other types of fields, you might find that the norm, the, the usual way of doing things, prefers one or the other. I don't care which one you use since you may or may not have had English 1A yet, and you haven't learned about this, but I do want you to get started. I will talk about MLA because, again, it's the most common used here at Hartnell as a generic format. And so you're going to write a paper. I will describe it in some detail. Uh, but essentially, the paper will be on a topic with a specific crop, and I've decided to let you pick, but I need to approve it first. So you pick a crop and a specific topic about that crop using either product processing or tooling. And so I don't want you to write all about the crop. This is a short focused research paper on one thing. So you're just going to talk about uh, possibly, um, you know, processing um, of carrots. Or maybe you're going to talk about um, processing uh, corn oils to make biodiesel fuel. It doesn't have to be something we eat. Maybe you're going to talk about um, uh, OTR film selection for use in uh, packaging bagged salads. Maybe you'll talk about a disease or a problem that comes afterwards. So maybe uh, russet spotting in post-harvest lettuce or uh, maybe uh, problems with pH and botulinum toxin in canned products of some sort. Uh, again, you're gonna be very focused. I don't want you to pick one crop and try and write everything about it. All the process and all the cooling, it's too uh, generic of a type of paper and it shows that you didn't do the research to find what's really been done on something, what kinds of problems are really out there being solved in this area of processing and cooling of different crops. So there's going to be a uh, either processing technology, cooling technology, disease issue in the post-harvest area that you're going to research and we'll do a couple of different assignments. The first assignment is going to be the project selection. 
and that will show up in assignments. So keep an eye on your uh, assignments for when I post that. And the second assignment, once you have an approved topic, will be creating an outline. And it's called the abstract and outline assignment. We'll get into that later when it's time for that assignment. But it's essentially creating a framework for your assignment and all of the things that you are going to do or discuss in your paper. And you should keep it relatively simple, straightforward. One, two, three, one, two, three, four main bullet points, and then you dig into the detail. And we'll get to that later again, like I said. So there's some details here, such as <clears throat> um, it's going to be a five page minimum paper. And that is double spaced. So it's not a long paper, not five single spaced pages, five double spaced pages as a minimum. Please give me more than five pages if you want to get a good solid grade and show that you worked hard on this. Um, it's going to include a title page, which doesn't count in the five pages. The title and abstract page actually is page one. And then at the very end, your last page, and if you really found a lot of things, maybe two pages, but most people fit their works cited on a single page. So your five page paper is sandwiched between two other pages, the abstract and outline as your first page and your works cited as the last page. And again, like I said, it might be called references or bibliography rather than works cited, depending on which type of writing format you choose. I want it to be 12 point times Roman font with one inch margins all around. Please follow instructions on page one, name ABT 93 and the date in the upper right hand corner. So you learn how to align text to the right. You learn how to do single spacing versus double spacing. There will be a descriptive title that it will be centered at the top of the page or uh, near the top. Um, and then there'll be a section heading titled abstract, all caps, abstract. And that generally is uh, left aligned, but I'm not gonna stress or worry about some of these details. And then you're going to do an abstract summary of the paper. Normally the abstract is the very, very, very last thing you write in a research paper, but I want you to write that first or a draft of it first to kind of keep you focused. What is your intent of your story? What do you want to say? What are the things you found out about your topic when you did the research? And give me an idea of the entire abstract or the entire story in summary right out of the gate. And then you'll redo your abstract. The last thing you should do when you finish your paper is polish the abstract and make sure it is accurate, complete, and contains everything your paper ended up being. How do you write a summary of everything that's in your paper till the paper's done? So almost all science writers write the abstract dead last. I'm asking you to do a draft of it first, like I said, to keep you focused, to understand, to get your brain wrapped around what your paper really is. Anything that doesn't fit into that idea, throw it out. You're gonna run across lots and lots of things. You might read um, you know, eight papers on the topic and each paper might have single spaced six, eight, 10 pages of stuff. And you're going to summarize that into five, six, seven pages double spaced. You're gonna have to throw a lot of stuff out. That's okay because most research papers talk about a broader topic and go into much more detail on a lot of things, you're going to narrow in, focus on one, one, one thing. Now, your abstract is gen generally single spaced. I'm not going to ding you on points there. I didn't even mention it here. Um, but then pages two to six will be your actual body. Uh, in general, it's what's called the introduction, the 
discussion or the body and your conclusion. Now, it's not original research. If you are doing original research, then you have these other sections in science called materials and methods, uh, results and, dis and then discussion. But you don't have a materials and methods because you're not doing the work. You're just summarizing what you find. This is a review paper more than an actual research paper. And you don't have results because again, you didn't do the research. So it's pretty much you jump right into the discussion of the things that you found. And at the very end, the works cited um, a minimum of four books or peer reviewed journal articles. Uh, you can also include websites, interviews, journal, or excuse me, newspaper articles and other sources. Um, and it's encouraged to use these other things, but I also want you to be, be sure you get peer reviewed journal articles, professional articles, not just stuff you find in the newspaper, stuff you find in trade magazines, things that are more likely to be <laughs> commercial gimmick stuff. Uh, so you gotta be careful. Now there is a, four minimum sources, and I want the four sources to be books or journal articles, professional items. Anything that's personal interviews, newspapers, websites, they count. In terms of my evaluation of your paper, they don't count towards the minimum of four that you need to have of the professional peer-reviewed journal articles. If you have any questions on that, you can go to the Panther Learning Lab. You can talk to me. I will also show you some stuff uh, in one of the segments of this particular lecture as well. Um, in addition to a paper, each student may be required to do a presentation. I have not decided about presentations. We'll talk about that later. Essentially what it would be is a five or six minute either live presentation in front of the class or recorded like I'm doing here on these Zoom recorded lectures and then uploaded to Canvas. Uh, in general, to get a five or six minute uh, PowerPoint, or Prezi or Google Slides, whatever you choose to use, I suggest seven to 10 content slides. Seven to 10 slides you're talking about. Plus there's a title slide and your last slide might either include, do you have any questions or references or you know whatever? Those don't count. Content slides, seven to 10. If you have some pictures that you're gonna go through, you know, sometimes you might have four pictures of of russet spotting that you show and you just kind of click through them and it takes you all of 20 seconds to go through all four of those. Um, that counts as one really, not, not as separate slides. Unless you stop and talk about things, point things out, you're gonna be a minute on that slide or at least 40 seconds on that slide. Don't count it towards the total. So how do we do this? You think of some ideas that interest you uh, based on the brainstorming, based on what you know, based on your personal interest. You can always call me. We can brainstorm over the phone. You can do some just random keyword searches. Um, you can look for keyword searches in the Hartnell Library, in Google. Uh, you can go to the University of California websites, especially UC Davis has some great stuff. I'll show you later. The US Department of Agriculture, they're right next door to the Alisal campus. And they've got some re great research that goes on there uh, as well as other locations for the Agricultural Research Service around the country. And we'll talk about the USDA throughout this class here and there. And they've got some good stuff. Um, there's also the webliography that is in the Canvas modules that has some links that can be helpful. 
So here's some ideas. Um, processing spinach, way too general. No idea what you're really digging into. Um, but some ideas of descriptive titles. The use of modified atmosphere packaging to improve the shelf life of packaged fresh spinach. Bingo, that's a descriptive title. Processing spinach is just lame. And I don't want clickbait kind of garbage that you might see on the internet. Um, amazing advances in spinach. Oh, what's that? I don't want what's that when I read your title. I wanna know exactly what that is. I wanna know exactly what you're writing about before I get to the first word of your abstract. The title should tell me exactly what you're doing. Uh, processing spinach for the frozen foods market. A comparison of smart wash versus chlorine for reducing bacterial loads in fresh packed spinach. The gener uh, genetic mapping of genes associated with improved shelf life in fresh packed spinach. Cooling methods used to improve shelf life of fresh packed spinach. Now, I said all of these about spinach because I was trying to tell you what might work if you're thinking in this very generic, very broad sense of processing spinach, that's way too general. But here's five ideas of how you can narrow it down within that range of processing spinach and have extremely different topics. These are five different papers and they're all just processing spinach. Uh, the following is just a sampling of ideas for other research projects. So you could look, these are not titles. These are just things to think about. The control of insects or diseases in post-harvest storage. I need more detail. What crop, what insect? Uh, control of insects or diseases for export, the use of technology for processing a given crop, whatever that is, comparison of cooling methods. So method one versus method two for some crop, you're comparing two ways of cooling and what are the pros and cons of each. Uh, specialized recipes for the production of some processed food product. So there are different ways of creating um, instant potatoes for freeze dried um, uh, vegan dinners, whatever. You, know, you gotta think what is interesting to you. So there's lots of things that might fall into that category of recipes, creating something for the consumer or for the uh, wholesale market, restaurants or things like that. Breeding for improved processing quality. So you could go into plant breeding, finding the genes and breeding for something that it does better in the post-harvest environment. I spent years doing that re for research in ag myself before I became a teacher. I was breeding for improved processing qualities of lettuce and uh, other crops. Research into new cooling equipment, research porting food safety guidelines, the effects of processing on the nutritional quality of a crop. Now be careful on that. Whenever you get the word nutritional quality, nutrition, there's a lot of garbage science out there and people start playing on emotions and thoughts. And, uh, I, you know, I do like the organic industry. I like the nutrition industries very much, but there's a lot of pseudoscience, garbage, and emotional crap that goes with them, unfortunately. Uh, I want real science. I want real information, not just um, somebody who's got a, an idea or a product or an emotional concept to sell. So the first part is going to be the research project proposal. And so this gives some details of what you're going to do there. You're going to create a document in Microsoft Word, OpenOffice, or some other program. OpenOffice is a word processing program that's free. It's called Apache OpenOffice now. But if you've got a Windows-based computer and wanted to have something that is as capable as Microsoft Word without having to spend any money, OpenOffice does that. You can also use Google Docs, but with Google Docs, you need to download your files so you can upload them to Canvas. And so don't forget, you can't just give me a link to a Google Doc that presents challenges. 
I, I would want you to download it first as a Word file or some other file, and then you upload it to, um, to Canvas in the assignments. Your name, ABT93, and the date in the upper right hand corner, right aligned, 12 point times Roman font, single space. Again, same thing, a descriptive title. Um, and then you're going to type in paragraph form, two to four paragraphs with a brief explanation of what you're going to do. This is not an abstract. This is just tell me what you plan on writing about. And I want to have um, a works cited and at least three references at this point. You might change some, you might add some. You're going to need a minimum of four, preferably five or six or seven in your final paper, but I need three to get started just to show me that you have found stuff to cite on this topic. There's stuff out there. And you can use educational sites, .edu, like ucdavis.edu, or .gov, a lot of good research in .gov sites. Um, beware of .com and .org sites. They tend to be less scientific, more about trying to sell you something. Um, but if you're talking about uh, a piece of equipment, a processing equipment, you probably have to go to the .com site for the manufacturer of that equipment and cite them. I'm not saying don't cite .coms, just be careful about them. They're not generally the professional sites. They're, they're trying to sell you something. They're trying to sell you ideas. They're trying to sell you a product. Um, .org also is hit or miss. There's a lot of pseudoscience on .org sites in general. Um, I want the file saved as a doc, docx or PDF. No matter what program you use, you can save as one or all three of those and then upload to uh, Canvas. So that's going to be the first assignment. Um, later in the semester, there will be an abstract and outline assignment. I already described an abstract a little bit, but I want to tell you now one other way of looking at an abstract. It's not just the conclusion. Some people say, well, isn't that just the conclusion? No, it's the introduction, the body, and the conclusion all rolled into one. I kind of describe it to students as the elevator speech. Let's say you're in a tall building and you get caught in the lobby getting on the elevator, and there's your boss. And as you step into the elevator, your boss says, hey, I hear you're doing a paper on, on processing or breeding for improved processing quality in spinach. Tell me about it. And you got to the fifth floor. What are you going to tell them? Not just the conclusions, because you haven't given them the introduction. You haven't given them any meat. How are you going to explain the entire paper before you hit the fifth floor? You only have time to spew out a couple paragraphs of words real quick. What are you gonna tell? That's an abstract. It's a summary of everything. Um, an outline is, as, it, as the name implies, it's a hierarchical or levels of organization for your paper. And I'm not going to go into the details here, but here's an example of a paper, um, an abstract and outline example. Here's something that's not related to product processing and cooling, but the effects of watershed runoff on salmon populations in the Pacific Northwest. I just made this up. Um, it's one of my favorite students, I wish. Uh, and the abstract, this is just uh, Latin gibberish, but You'll notice that in here, I've got some uh, CSE style citations. These are not MLA style, but whatever. Um, I'm more of a science guy. And you see that I'm citing things. I'm actually telling you where did the piece of information come from? Again, this is just made up, but this is a perfect abstract and title page. Got my name, ABT93 and the date, or the student's name. It's got my abstract with the word abstract right here to make it very clear. The abstract is single spaced. And then 
on the next page, uh, the same title and heading with the name, and then my outline. Bingo. And what is my outline? I've got an introduction, the body, two, three, and four are the bodies, and a conclusion. And then all the details underneath. You'll notice almost every single line, I'm telling you where I got that information from. Where is that piece of information? So introduction and conclusion with my story in between. What's my story? This is about salmon populations. So step one, what are the issues with water quality? It has to do with temperature, particulates, toxins, debris, and dams. Those are the things affecting water quality in the salmon area. Now that I know what the water quality issues are, what effects do those things have on salmon populations? They cause reduced populations and they cause problems, mutations and defects in the, pro in the affected populations as well. And what are those mutations and defects? And I go into some detail here. So now I said, what are the water issues? What problems do those cause with the salmon? And remediation, that's how do I fix it? Or what are we doing to correct these problems? What can be done to help? Bingo, one, two, three. Water problems, what does that affect? And how do we fix it? You could do the same thing with breeding spinach for improved shelf life quality. Step one, describe what are the shelf life quality problems. Step two, describe what variation there is in plants and spinach plants that can hurt or help with the genetics. And step three, describe how they've been bred to make improvements. One, two, three. And most stories can be told one, two, three, maybe one, two, three, four. And that's all you need. If you're going to five, you're probably thinking something wrong. You can organize it a little better. If you're going to six, that's not what you should have for this paper. Introduction, conclusion, and three or four things in between. That's how you tell your story. And if you organize it this way in an outline, now it's easy. Writing the paper is just saying, all right, type it up. Make sentences out of it. The hard part's done. I've read all the papers. I've organized. I've got all my notes that I've taken during the papers. Now I just have to turn it into a paper by following my outline. And then it works cited. You'll notice they're all hanging indents, meaning the first line is left aligned. The second line is indented. They call that a hanging indent. I do want hanging indents. And these are just made up papers. I, I literally made them up. Um, I think the authors and years and some of the information is actually true. I just made up the titles and I, I changed them. Uh, anyway, that's the research paper. So I'm gonna take a quick break and come back and show you, what do you do with this information? How do you turn this into a paper? Where do you find some ideas?